Here's Landy Lara. Lara, a Cuban uh, defector uh, who has fought in the United States for a long time. Dan is very familiar with him. Finding a guy out of Ireland, Gary Spike O'Sullivan. And look at the disparity in the odds. Uh, Laura heavily favored, minus 225 to win by a knockout. A Spike O'Sullivan KO would, would pay plus 1,400. And if he somehow gets it to the distance, gets the route, it would be plus 1,800 with, a, uh, with an over-under of seven and a half rounds on that one. So kind of interesting, uh, Dan Raphael, on that, uh, on, on that situation there. Uh, what, what do you think? What are your thoughts on Laura? It's a middleweight contender bout. Laura's still looking to get into championship contention again. What well, are your he's thoughts? De he's defending his secondary title for the first time. Uh, you know, he's, he's the WBA regular champion. Uh, the real champion in that weight class is, uh, you know, they, they, the WBA, unfortunately, for a long time has had multiple champions in each division. They're trying to trim that down. He has their secondary version of it. The, the, the real, quote, unquote, WBA champion is Triple G, Gennady Golovkin. But the bottom line with Larry Slande Laris, he moved up to the middleweight division about a year ago and won this belt against Thomas Lamana by a first round knockout. Prior to that, he had been for many years uh, one of the best fighters and uh, held titles in the 154-pound junior middleweight division. Uh, and look, he, he's a very skilled fighter, was a top-notch amateur. He's getting a little bit older now, but he's still a very talented fighter. Maybe has slowed down a little bit from the standpoint of not being able to outslick everybody the way he once did, so he's forced to sort of stand and trade a little bit more than he once did, hence the reason why he was in the fight of the year a couple, a few years ago against Jared Hurd, which was just an all-out action fight. But when, he's, when he doesn't have to have that kind of skilled guy in front of him or another guy that's fresh, you know, he can really run circles around you and make you look foolish. And Gary Spike O'Sullivan is a hard-nosed fighter. He's a veteran. He's been winning a lot of good guys. But every time he stepped up to that next level, he's been wiped out, mostly by knockout. He's been beaten by the likes of David Lemieux in the first round. Of course, Lemieux last week in the in the slugfest against David Benavides where he got stopped. You know, uh, O'Sullivan has also lost to the likes of Chris Eubanks Jr. and Billy Joe Saunders. The point is, when he steps up in class, it's not a good look for him. And Lara, you know, should handle him. Let's be honest about it. This is not a this is a showcase fight for Arislandi Lara. It would be, in my mind, a huge upset if Gary Spike O'Sullivan gets the victory. You know, and again, if you want to really be honest about it, it's kind of a mismatch. And uh, Arislandi Lara should win this fight. He should look great doing it. If he's got anything left, again, he's coming off the year layoff. He's he's fighting in a heavier weight class than he's normally fought in. But uh, he's a talented guy, and, uh, and Spike O'Sullivan um, just isn't at that level. He doesn't make bad fights, but he's not at that talent level. And this is a big-time Arislandi Lara win. And like I said, maybe upset of the year caliber uh, upset if, if O'Sullivan can get the victory. Well, Lara should be focused. And again, here we're helping you with your, with your betting advice for the Saturday night pay-per-view. This is the co-feature fight. Dan, where do we think this fight will come on the timeline? I always uh, love you get these questions because it's a, it's a triple header on that fight yep. card. This one come in what? Probably 10 Eastern time, something like that. Lara, like all these major pay-per-views, it's a four fight card. So it's not a triple header. It's four fights. It's four. This is the co-feature. So you're going to start at nine o'clock Eastern time. Uh, there'll be two fights, and then will be this fight. So it's impossible to say the exact time. So just sit mm -hmm. back and enjoy the show, TJ. All right. Be calm on that. And da and the Davis fight will not happen before 11, even Most in the two hours. Not. They'll stretch. They'll stretch on the Davis-Romero for later in the night. Uh, one other point here, if we're making the wagering before we lock in the picks, Aries Landy Laura does have the one-round knockout of Thomas Lamana last year, not much of an opponent. But you look at the fights in and around that. He had another second round knockout, but but in and around that, he's had five other fights that have gone the distance, either at junior middleweight or middleweight. So you and I are kind of on board on the knockout here, but he's had a lot of fights, Laura, that have gone the route. So that's kind of curious here. That makes me a little unsure of that over under at seven and a half rounds on the bet US line on taking Laura earlier in the fight. Any thought on this one? from that standpoint about Laura fighting a lot of distance fights in the last two or three years of his career? Laura fights distance fights when he's in with top opposition. Laura gets knockouts when he's, when he's in with inferior opposition. He's in with inferior opposition on Saturday. And Spike O'Sullivan is knocked out several times in his career. This fight ain't going the distance, in my opinion. <laughs> okay, let's lock it in to that effect. Both of us here love Arislandi Lara to get the win by knockout. So again, you're laying 225. That is what is supposed to happen. You're laying 
uh, $2.25 for every dollar that you're betting. That's what's supposed to happen. But Dan even believes more so than I do. I think the veteran O'Sullivan, who's, what, 37 years old, can hang in there uh, beyond that over-under where it is at seven and a half rounds. Dan's not so sure. We're going to lock him in as well. He thinks he gets to O'Sullivan and gets to him quicker. And in fairness, as you mentioned, in the step up in competition, he got knocked out quicker. You said that earlier. So Dan is also on the under here uh, as well. I was not as keen on taking the under. So Dan on this fight in the co-feature, Eris Landy, Laura, Spike O'Sullivan has two of uh, his plays, which will be the knockout for Laura and the under. He likes both of those for what that is worth. How realistic? We know Canelo Alvarez announced this week he's fighting Gennady Golovkin. That fight will be at super middleweight. So no matter what happens, I, I can't believe... Okay, so let's stop right here. Do we believe they would fight a fourth time if Golovkin were to beat him? I know that's way, projecting way down the road. But my point is, for Laura or anybody else at middleweight waiting on Golovkin, you might be waiting a while, right, to get a chance at him in 2023. I don't think Golovkin was fighting Laura anyway. Gennady is winding down his career. He's 40 years old. This is the big fight he has wanted uh, against uh, against Canelo. Uh, a fourth fight, I, I guess it depends on what happens in the third fight. You never say never. We did see a fourth fight, for example, between Pacquiao and, uh, and uh, Juan Manuel Marquez. You know, back several years ago, we saw a fourth fight from a great trilogy. Uh, extending the trilogy between Rafael Marquez, uh, Juan's brother, and uh, Israel Vasquez. But but four-fight series, are un they're not common these days. Uh, I'd be surprised, frankly, at that point. Um, but no one's going to be waiting on, on Gennady Golovkin. Lara, uh, you know, at some point, the WBA will order the fight for uh, to consolidate those titles, and it'll be up to them to decide if they want. I'd be surprised if it actually happens. Somebody eventually, you got to figure, will vacate. The main thing from Lara's point of view is going into this fight against Spike O'Sullivan – as he talked about during the lead-up. Uh, you know, he understands he's got to take care of his business Saturday with uh, Spike O'Sullivan, but he has said he wants to fight the elite fighters in the middleweight division. Uh, he, he has a point when he says a lot of guys haven't wanted to fight him, which is true for a couple reasons. One, he, he, he's a hard fight for anybody. He has been at the junior middleweight division. I suspect even in the middleweight division, even though he's a little older now, he's still a tough fight for anybody. He doesn't bring a huge amount of money. He doesn't bring a huge fan base. So, you're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place if you're Laura because, you know, guys want to fight. They'll fight, you know, hard fights, but they need that. They want it to produce either a big money or be big glory. And unfortunately for Laura, he doesn't really produce either one of them. So if you're going to get a fight with him, uh, if you're a big name, it's going to probably be because you're forced to do so. Uh, so he's, he's going to be in a, in a little bit of a difficult situation if he wins. Uh, but as long as he keeps winning, he's still going to be there uh, pounding away to try to get those bigger fights just how long he can go and who will finally be willing to fight him. The middleweight division is kind of, you know, petering out, let's say, at the top level. Triple G is now taking the step up to super middleweight. Demetrius Andre, who has one of the belts, he is on the he's on the sideline at the moment for several months because of an injury, but he was planning on fighting his next bout in the super middleweight division. And uh, so a lot of those top names are not there anymore. Charlo has a fight coming up, but a lot of people think he's going to move up, maybe eventually have a fight with the super middleweight David Benavides. Point is that the better names in the middleweight division are starting to clear out. So maybe it will open up the space for Lara to do something down the road. Well put on all of that. We have fans that are watching. We're not going to.